four year old rock star Sting, starting a new jazz. Bring on the Night is the title of the pompous and at times downright laughable new documentary based on the first rehearsals and concerts of a new band fronted by the rock star Sting. His real name is Gordon Sumner. And in this new band, he plays with a number of black jazz musicians and singers. Now, Sting used to be with the group known as The Police, and he opens the film by saying that this is going to be a very special documentary, not like most rock documentaries about a great group at the end of their reign, but about a new group. And when the group does sing in this rehearsal and in this performance montage we're going to see, the sound is pretty good. If I built this fortress around your now full voice. One, two, three, four. If I built this fortress around your heart, Unfortunately, at regular intervals, Sting doesn't sing. He talks, often in a pompous or self-inflated manner. Uh, yes. It was the first time I was lying in bed in a hotel in, in the north of England. We'd just done a concert. And our first record was in the, uh, the charts. And uh, a window cleaner was whistling Roxanne. And that was... Uh, it. I almost wept because I realized that he was whistling a tune that I'd uh, written, something that I'd uh, composed in my front room for no other purpose but to amuse myself. And there was this window cleaner, and I had a very similar experience in the hospital after Jake had been born, where one of the uh, orderlies was whistling Walking on the Moon as he walked past the door. Full circle, really. It's a great privilege for that to happen to you. I'm sure it is a great privilege, but the line he says, I almost wept, that's a little shaky. Uh, it reminds me, Roger, of the first time I heard you saying a line from one of my reviews, and I heard you repeating it one day, and I, I almost wept. Did you really? Probably yeah. because I was laughing while I said it. Thank you. <laughs> elsewhere in the film, now this is where he really goes off the wall, elsewhere in the film he compares his life to an oil tanker roaming the world, never at rest never pulling into port. <laughs> That's right, except for his multi-million dollar concert tours, he manages to get into port for those. Many times during this film, I wanted to yell at the screen, oh, just shut up and just sing. I didn't need, really, to see the birth of Sting's baby son on camera. You see this birth, it was like a school class film, you know? <laughs> it comes across as the ultimate in narcissistic music videos. The next thing you know, he's going to show us slides from his trip to Niagara Falls with uh, the woman they had the baby with when they get married. Other disappointments include a couple of fraudulently staged scenes, as well as the failure of the film to live up to its promise of showing us how songs and a new band are created. Where are the writing sessions? How are the casting decisions made? Bring on the night, I say. Bring on the singing. The movie was directed by Michael Apted, the yeah. man who made Coal Miner's Daughter. Yes. I thought it might be good. Totally phony. How'd you like that tour group of old ladies who were taken mm -hmm. through their chateau while they're rehearsing? I'm yeah. sure that the chateau would be open to... Right. And I'm sure the ladies would actually want to go through it while they're being there. Yeah, right. Yeah. The next bus is going to arrive. In Use the old minutes. ladies. The other thing that I didn't like was the way that the movie constantly centered on Sting. It's a vanity production. It's supposedly how he's got this whole band together. There's a little talk about how he's going to make I almost know. all of the money, and they're not going to make very much, right. but they never ask him about that. Yeah, it's, that's the most honest thing in the mm -hmm. film, is the manager who says Sting's going to get all the money. That one of the guys uh, interviewed, one of the musicians interviewed, and I'm glad they did some interviews with mm -hmm. the other side, musician says, we'll see if it's really going to be a band where the decisions are shared. Mm -hmm. Based on the evidence here, I think the answer is no, but I'm not sure that the film really wanted to say that. We don't follow up, in this other words, movie, on the issues that are raised. This movie is not a true documentary because it doesn't have journalist instincts. For example, the most interesting human story on the screen is one of the backup singers, one mm -hmm. of the women, mm -hmm. who started out as a phone girl in a New York house of prostitution. Now, yeah. how she got from that 
to the top ranks of uh, pop and rock superstardom would probably be more interesting, more interesting story than how Sting is going to uh, have his new baby on camera. And I'll tell you this, my favorite character in the whole film was not Sting, it was the keyboard artist. I liked him. <laughs> Kenny <laughs> Kirkland, I think. Kenny Kirkland. Next at the movies, Gene Hackman is ready to trade his life for the life of his kidnapped wife. 